I'm Simon and I'm here at Airbeam TV to get you started mirroring your Mac to your Sony Android TV. So let's get started. First things first, we need to download Airbeam TV for our Mac. Now I am using my late 2013 MacBook Pro. Yeah, I'm not even living that dongle life. And I'm running OS Mojave. Couple of ways you can get the app. The first one, simply go to the Mac App Store and look for the Mirror for Sony TV app. You can download it from there. Or, here's a hot tip, head to the Airbeam TV website where you can download a trial version for free. Test it out, see if it works for you. Perfect. Once you've got the app installed, we need to make sure that our laptop and our TV are both connected to the same network, be that wirelessly or via the old-fashioned cable. Oh, we've definitely done that. So, let's open up the app for the first time. Oh, look at that. It's down there in my dock already. I put it there. I'm organized. Here we go. And there it is. It pops up in your taskbar. A quick side note, if you are running a firewall on your Mac, you'll probably want to disable that to make sure these guys play happily together. So let's click the menu bar to get started. Here we go. Target device, KD43, that's this guy over here. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is click the enable sound on TV box. Obviously we want the sound coming out of our TV, not our laptop, so that's the first thing we need to do. And when we do that, it'll pop up this thing that says install the audio driver. Now due to the way that Macs work, we have to install a separate audio driver to throw the sound from here over to this guy. Conveniently, the link is here, so we click open the website and that will take us to the Airbeam TV website where we download the audio driver. So we simply click download audio driver, it'll pop up a little download box, you can save it wherever you like. I'm going to save it to my desktop. It's a very small file so it'll only take a couple of seconds and then you basically open that package and it has a little installer which will talk you through step by step how to install the driver, which means I don't have to. Fast forward through this part. Great, he's there. So we can head back up to the app at the top there in our taskbar and click enable sound on TV. Now Apple will pop up another little uh, question, warning. Uh, allow access to microphone. Again, this is an Apple thing. You need to allow the access to the microphone because that's tied into the sound to get it over to the TV. Rest assured, no one's recording what you're saying. So I'm going to click Authorize. Mirror for Sony TV would like to access the microphone. OK. Now the temptation might be to start mirroring straight away. I want it now. But if you want the best possible performance, best thing to do is install the Airbeam TV app onto your Android TV. So we're going to do that now. So from the main menu, we're going to head down to the Google Play Store. That's where they keep the apps. Head in there and then up to search and then we are going to search for Airbeam TV via the oh so delightful and fast way of clicking each letter individually. Maybe pop and get a cup of tea while I do this. Yes, didn't even have to type the whole thing. Uh, there's the app Airbeam screen mirroring from iPhone, iPad, Mac. So I'm gonna click on that guy and there it is. Click on this and install, please. And there it goes. So that's downloading 17 meg, shouldn't take very long. It's installing on the TV and there he is. And so I'm now gonna click open. What a lovely little bing noise the TV makes too. Uh, so there we go. That's the app running on the TV and I can now click start mirroring on my Mac. As you can see uh, at the top here, the target device, it's the same name for the TV, but the little icon there has changed into a little Android. So that's how you know you're doing it the most efficient way. You've got the app, a little Android's appeared. Let's start mirroring. Ta -da! It's my laptop. It's my laptop screen for you all to see. Um, I, I didn't... I didn't hide anything, so uh, yikes, no, should be fine. Um, so here we are, so say you want to do mirror, you know, pictures, you're doing a presentation or something, basically everything you see on my laptop screen appears up there. A lovely picture of Amsterdam, for example, or 
another lovely picture of Amsterdam. Perhaps also you want to watch videos on the TV from your laptop. You can do that if they're stored on the hard disk. You might want to show them on a TV or if it's from a website, equally the same thing. Uh, so here's something that's stored on my hard disk. Uh-oh, it's this guy again. And thanks to that audio driver, the sound is coming out of the TV. Okay, I think that's enough of that guy. Of course, it's worth mentioning again, there is a little bit of what they call latency, which means there's a one to three second delay between the things being on this screen and them appearing on that screen. Of course, that's absolutely fine if you're looking at pictures, doing a presentation, doing movies. What it does mean is that high intensity gaming is not passable. Maybe Minesweeper. And that's it. That's how easy it is. If you do have any questions, queries, problems, feel free to get in touch with us via Facebook Messenger or email. Until next time, I'm contractually obliged to say, happy mirroring, everyone.